everyone. Welcome to Media Crash episode 13, I believe. Uh, on this episode, we're going to be talking just about anime and our favorite animes. Uh, and we actually have a guest with us, uh, good old Aaron. What's um, up? Yes, he is one of our great friends and a weeb just like us. Hell yeah. So uh, my name is Holden, otherwise known as Time to Grind. Uh, my name is Matthew, also known as Sutter. My name is not Dan... No, Daniel, otherwise known as not Daniel. And yes. I am Aaron, also known as just Aaron. It's, it's beautiful. So um, there's a lot of different types of, you know, anime genres. Um, we could attempt to list them all um, if we wanted to, but I don't... Yeah, we could. Because there's a billion, you know, ones and things like this. So I guess let, to, to start us off, why don't we all just go around and say, like, our top three... Like anime, just like off the bat. So, so you want you want to start? Top three. All right. Well, first is definitely Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Ooh. And it's hard between Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood and the f original, although, yeah. And then Hunter Hunter is a good one. My third one. Let me get back to you on that. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> what about you, Dan? I'm gonna have to go with. Uh, I'm thinking Attack on Titan, Steins Gate. And I'm gonna have to get back to you. <laughs> okay, what about you, Matthew? You got three for me? Um, I could meme it, but I'm gonna say, uh, probably Cowboy Bebop, um, My Hero Academia, because that was the first one that got me into stuff, and I guess Hunter is Hunter, to be honest. That's really good. I only watched recently, and like, it's pretty good. It, it resonates with you, man. But yeah, for me, I think my number one would be uh, Evangelion. And then number two would probably be Cowboy Bebop. And number three would probably be uh, My Hero Academia. All right, I have a third one. You have your third one? It's a, it's a sports anime. It's called Haikyuu, and it's about volleyball. I don't think any of you have seen that. I, 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 I kind of want to see it. I have it's pretty seen good. Um, just, like, not really ads for it, but just people shilling for it. It looks pretty good. It's pretty good. I thought of my answer. It's not necessarily because it's quality, though I do think it's quality. Uh, the 90s adaptation of the Golden Age arc of Berserk was, mm, love that. Well, it was beautiful. Um, I, it holds a special place in my heart. Yeah, I, I think, because, like, it's, like, everybody, it's interesting to hear everybody's, like, top three, because these are all prob probably great anime, um, and, but, like, like, for as an example, for me with Evangelion, I don't know if I ultimately like it as much as, like, some say something like Cowboy Bebop, but just, like, when I watched it in my life, it made such like an impact on me, you know what I mean? That like, yeah. it's just gonna probably permanently have the number one spot on my list. Yeah, um, and that's kind of the same for Full Metal Alchemist with me. Like, I think it was good, but like specifically like when I watched it, made it that much better. Yeah, you know? like it just resonated with you yeah. like really well. Yeah, what, what about you guys? It was like one of the ones. Uh, my hero to a degree. But I usually just attribute to the show and anime in general. Isn't that like, what got you into anime? Yeah, it got me into anime and like just the whole perseverance of just, you know, that anime, but just any anime in general of like, you know, just work at it, do your best, kind of helped me in life a lot. Plus Ultra. Yeah, plus Ultra. <laughs> plus Ultra. Um, Call Me Bebop also to a degree because it also like the ending message of you got to cure that weight also resonated with me of just, you know, you just got to go through life. Okay, so we were kind of talking about this in the car, but, like, comparing, like, Evangelion to, like, Cowboy Bebop, I think they're both, like, really existential. But, like, personally, I think I'd still like Cowboy Bebop better because, like, they're both existential, but they're both in, like, two different mindsets. Like, I think Evangelion is, like, slightly less mature, and then, like, or at least, like, a less mature way of, like, looking at existentialism. Yeah, because, like, Cowboy Bebop, it's, it's almost like, it almost has the, the type of thing where it's, like, we're all going to die, but, like, you might as well just keep on going, you know, like, persevere, yeah. push through it almost. And it deals a lot with, like, dealing with the past and, like, I mean, how to move on from it. It yeah. makes sense because just the main characters in both series, one is a bunch of teenagers trying yeah. Going through some very traumatic things <laughs> and having to deal with that. But name one traumatic thing that happens in Evangelion. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Cowboy Bebop, all these traumatic things happen. They're like in their thirties or forties. And they've had time to kind of yeah, and then try it, to like it's each of the characters has their own way of dealing with that past. Yeah. Yeah. So then that's that, and then Evangelion. I mean, especially. Oh, I don't know if I want to spoil it too much, but it's pretty much just like. 
it's equivalent to just taking like 10 billion grams of hard psychedelic <laughs> at the end of the show. Uh, I don't, I don't want to spoil too much because it's an amazing show. And both of those shows are like 24, 25 episodes. They're not some, you know, I guess say uh, my girlfriend, her favorite anime, probably, well, I think now it's My Hero Academia after watching um, it. But it was like Naruto and Naruto Shippuden. And it's like every time she gets me to try to watch it, it's just like the same it's, thing with your Are you still on yeah. the bridge too? Like, I, just, I, no, we, I, we've been skipping around because she's like, I at least want to show you things like the pain arc and stuff like okay, that. Okay, but that's the thing. Like with those, those like really long run series, like... Some of it's so good, but, like, a lot of it is just filler. So, yeah. like, you have to pick out the good pieces. Yeah, so, like, I enjoyed the pain arc, like, because you just showed me the pain arc by itself, which I know probably doesn't have as much impact when you're not as invested with them, but it's, like, there's a billion episodes. I, I don't have time to watch a billion episodes. Yeah. I mean, I, that's kind of how Hunter x Hunter started to become, but, like, it's, it's long, but it's still only, like, 150 episodes. I, like, like, that's, that's more doable. manageable. Hunter x Hunter for me thousand. is an exponential increase in quality. Like the yeah. first, uh, the first couple episodes are eye-rollingly stupid, in my opinion, because they don't even get to the test, but they keep doing the the um, the first arc in the Hunter x Hunter is just a test to become a hunter, which I'm not gonna get into. But the first couple episodes, they aren't, aren't even taking the test technically, but it's a bunch of like, oh, you need to take this test to be able to take the main test, and the whole time I'm like. Just take the test. Like, <laughs> what, why you do this weird arbitrary bullshit? Like, if, it's to weed I, out all the hunters. But they would uh, that but, suck. But they would already suck in the hunt the exam. Yeah, just have but, them fail the exam. But then they would just die. Did you did you watch the exam? The exam was intense. But a bunch of they people had already to die. They, just, they obviously don't care about bodies. Okay. Yeah, but they're probably <laughs> trying to limit the amount of <laughs> bodies. They don't want to just massacre their own like <laughs> civilization. All right, apply for hunter, and you'll probably die. But if you don't die, you'll be a hunter, and that's pretty cool. But yeah, but like <laughs> the test itself, I do like like the actual tests, even though it did take. There's like five tests, so it, like it feels a little long. But after that, they actually go into the world and do stuff. That's when it gets more interesting. And then the next arc of that, they actually learn like the ability system in that world and after that they actually apply that to an actual it has, story arc it has a lot of world building and like character progression and like an actual story and yes. like there are times when it's a little slow but even the slow parts are like holy shit that's good it's like the chimera at and arc that was slow as balls it but it was, was so good it was amazing um it like it's a shonen but it has the same mature writing as like Attack on Titan has a lot of the time, where like it actually has like theme themes. I just want to say with Attack on Titan, I haven't caught up with like the newest part of the newest season because like <laughs> whatever that newest season was, the first half of it, I was like, oh, okay, I guess this show's just turning to shit. Like it just, I didn't. I mean, I enjoyed it. I think I, more than you and Corey did. Yeah, I didn't. But I was really bored in the first half, to be honest. So I haven't seen the, the second half. Watch of it. up to where it's at now. It's Fucking yeah. sick, second half. and that's you, all I'm gonna say. Second half. So yeah. glad Armin. That's all I can say because I don't want to spoil anything. Oh yeah. I'm just so happy Armin survived. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> my, because my experience with um, hu um, whatever that show that I just said is called. What is, what is the show called? Huntry Who? Hunter? Attack Hunt on Titan. No, Attack no, on no. Titan. I literally just said it. I don't know how oh. I forgot it. Um, Huntry Who? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, it's Hunter sweet. here's a who. <laughs> Sounds like yeah. I was, I was gonna say it's like um a doc. Dr. Dr. Seuss, Seuss character, yeah. yeah. But uh, I, I was, like, complaining and bitching that, like, all these animes were, like, not being... Like, because I always get mad, like, in, my, in, like, My Hero Academia, or just any anime for that matter, where they don't want to be fully violent, so there's, like, a villain that has mass-murdered, like, ten villages, and they finally catch him. And in reality, you should just end his life right there, because if you somehow... If you imprison him, he's going to escape, and I know four arcs later, he's going to go mass-extinct ten more civilizations. So it's like, you just need to kill these people. But they don't want to because it's, you know, kids kid show or whatever. Yeah. And then so I think Corey and Matthew were telling me, um, like, oh, watch Attack on Titan. That, that's, that's the show for you. And I was like, the first episode, it's not really spoiling because it's the first episode. But just like, just I mean, just like everything a billion people shit. die in like really like brutal ways and everything. So, um, Poor yeah. Aaron's mom. Attack on Titan. <laughs> yeah. Attack on Titan is, is pretty good. Um, I, I honestly can't recommend watching through to, like, how far have you gotten? Literally, like, the, the first half, like... Yeah, they, they did, like, a break or something yeah. in between. Oh, you got just to the break? Yeah. Of the new season, halfway through the new season. Right, yeah. yeah, you should watch... Yeah, I'm gonna stop shilling Attack on Titan. 
this was still in the podcast, but yeah, you should watch. I, I, I definitely need to. I think the other um, anime I want to talk about, which I think we've all seen, is JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Oh yes. Um, Wait. All right. Move everything I said in the favorites list down one peg, and JoJo JoJo's like at above the top. that. Yeah. Uh, above everything. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's fair. Like. I think what I like about JoJo is because, like, My Hero Academia, the whole the whole premise and the power system is that um, seventy percent of the population has quirks and they can be pretty much whatever they want. Eighty percent. Eighty percent. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, but then uh, in JoJo, at least once you get to part three, because part one and part two are kind of different, but they're really short. I think part three is when the show kind of like makes a change, at yeah. least in terms of that. But the power system is, yeah, there's these people, and they have these things called stands. They can be whatever they want. I mean, someone's stand is just a car. Someone's <laughs> stand is a boat. Like, some, like it's just like they literally, you know. It gets dumb. It gets more creative. Maybe not more creative, but they have more room to kind of, like, be they creative. They definitely get yeah. more abstract. With, yeah. Like, pretty much every single season of JoJo, the new main villain replaces the last main villain for me and like which I like more because just every time I see it like put to like put to animation I absolutely love it like you know Dio in part three is such a bastard and it's so fun to hate him and then you get Kira in part four who's just so mm. then Dio Diavolo or Dio Diavolo Di however you pronounce yeah. his name in part five Diavolo. all the villains in Jojo are just like <clears throat> They're good. Yeah. I know, and I've only seen half of part four, so I actually haven't seen... You like, haven't... Wait, yeah. you haven't gotten to the good part of part four. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently not. Apparently I just watched half of an anime, a season of an anime. But um, I'm showing Caitlin um, Jojo right now, and I, we're, like, halfway done with part three, so... I think Araki did it best of being like, I'm just gonna make, like, an anthology series. So, like, rather than just, like, a long-running shonen where the, the, you have to find a reason for the character to get more and more powerful... Instead, he just like you can he resets the thing, and not and it's not even like every villain is more powerful than the last necessarily, but be, and like you can have the next shonen protagonist also not be more OP than the last, so you can you can keep going. Yeah, and I like the way that like he he kind of just changes what genre. Mm -hmm. Like he kind of it, it is. It's just like this season's gonna be this. This season's gonna be that. Because then it's not like you don't have you said power creep or yeah. Um, Things getting boring. Um, yeah. Do you know, so you know about like how all the stands in JoJo are named after popular music groups. This is more just a dumb piece of trivia. So one of the stands for the part, I think, Seven Villain is uh, Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap. Which is a band, I think? Or is it or it's a song thought, by, okay. I think, ACDC? I don't know. Uh, anyways, that's the villain's uh, stand's name. However, they can't use that name because, you know, copyright, obviously. So they localize it to filthy acts at a reasonable price. <laughs> and every time he wants to use his ability, he yells out, filthy acts at a reasonable price. So does that start after part three? Because in part that, three, they're named after tarot cards, I think, right? Yeah, no, in part, um, in part four, most of them were named that's after... What, okay. There's, like, Chili Peppa and... Um, ACDC is one of the oh, villains in part two. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. Cars and Lisa Lisa is also a artist, I think. Lisa. I think so. Uh Speedwagon. Speedwagon. Oh, Mario yeah. Speedwagon. The guy literally named AC DC. Well, that's that. a character. Oh. I thought you just said cars. No. Alright, I will say, I've only seen a season and a half of JoJo's because like the first season felt really slow to That's, Yeah. Yes, I mean, no. it is at least, and it's like, only nine episodes, which is yeah. the saving grace of it, but I agree. I also agree. But, like, it seems, like, I've been told by all of you at one point or another that, like, after season two, it gets just infinitely better. I think part two is amazing. Yeah, I, part two is one of my favorite parts, yeah. it, but it is, like, completely different than, like, the rest of the JoJo's. And right. I think you would love the music references in that show. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess the oh. other thing, oh, go ahead. Or, this is just a separate topic, if you have more to say about No, 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 I was changing topic too. <laughs> okay, um, so a question for all of y'all. I guess we can start here and work our way around. Uh, what got y'all into anime? Like, what's the first show that y'all watched? Oh, crap. I have, I know mine, it's hilarious. So, I think the first show I ever watched was actually, well, it was probably some random bullshit. It was like, I watched an episode of Attack on Titan, didn't really click with me, because I remember a character going like, 
faced the sword of justice as he hit a person. I was like, what is this? And then, like, that's the thing. It's, it's not even just, like, the, um, the cringy, like, anime moments of, like, Oni-chan and, like, weird sister stuff. For me, it was also just the dialogue. It's just a different culture. And so, like, the dialogue, just reading it out sometimes, I'm just like, people don't talk like that. Maybe they do in, over there, and maybe it's just a translation thing. But, like, I just, you know, yeah. it just annoyed me. But the, the show that technically got me into watching anime was when me, Corey was like, do you want to watch Naruto with me? And I was like, I have nothing to do this summer. Sure. Sure. And he... And you wasted he, your whole summer doing He that. held me down. And we watched... He held you all, down? All, oh, uh, no. No. Uh, <laughs> all of Naruto and all... We skipped filler, of course. Always skip filler, in my opinion, if you, you want to save time. Did you skip filler in One Piece? Yes. Because, the, yeah. But um, in Naruto, in all of Naruto Shippuden, and it was pretty rough, I gotta say. Um, I think it's even rougher than One Piece, in my opinion, even though One Piece is like a billion times longer. Um, but, yeah, but One Piece is like, it did click, it finally clicked with me. It got me to cry at one point because shown in anime, like, due to cheap tactics to make you cry. Um, and then, like, some of the story elements were actually pretty cool, and then some of the characters I really liked. Um, and I was like, okay, I can see why people like anime. Yeah. And then my hero, I started watching with Anna um, at the time. And then I just like superheroes. And the first season's okay. Um, I, I, every other person I know is like, oh, is he just going to become a superhero without powers? And it, everyone's kind of like, it's kind of dumb. But the, the story ramps up. Yeah. And it's a superhero anime, if people don't know. And it's actually done really well. <laughs> yeah. Um, in that's a mature a really way. And that's when I really started getting into anime. Yeah, I can't remember if it was... I know it was you showing me something. And I can't remember if it was either... Like, Cowboy Bebop or My Hero Academia, I can't remember which one. But one of those, I, I, like, used to just be one of those people that I, like, hated anime, whatever. And then I watched one of the good animes, and Matthew was like, see, it's like, it's like any other medium. There's a bunch of really shit anime. <laughs> but, you know, there's yeah. also some good anime, just like anything else. If you look at, like, most TV shows in America, most TV shows are hot garbage. Yeah. But, you know, there's some good ones. So um, I can't remember if it was Cowboy Bebop or My Hero, but... I think I... Matthew showed me the way. Unless it was first strong. showed you my hero. I think that's the first yeah. anime. So, well, you just started watching anime when you um, got into college. So you're both, like, relatively fresh weeblets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my little weeblets. <laughs> Man. I've All been right. infected since freshman year yeah, of high me, school. Yeah, me too. Well, I've been a weeb since freshman year. So, okay, so honestly, like, my... my I think the first anime that I can ever remember watching, I don't even remember the name, but it was hot garbage. <laughs> it was like a super like harem -y, like uh. it, it was hot garbage. The first one that was like decent that I remember watching was SAO and then Full Metal Alchemist. I think that was the the order of like what I watched. And like the first like SAO was okay. And then, like, Full Moon Alchemist is what, like, really got me into it, you know? Okay. And what what attracted you to, like, anime? Being like, okay, I can see, like, what the appeal is. Because for me, it was shown in anime, specifically. And it was like, okay, the action scenes are actually cool. They're, they're very slow in some anime, but, like, they're thought out. Like, yeah. most, like, action-y cartoons or shows just have a fight. And so, I think because, like... One of the things was my freshman year, I was in art class, and I just really enjoyed the art style of a lot of them. So even though, like, the first ever anime that I ever watched was, like, super harem and kind of, like, just cheesy as hell to watch, like, was I, I don't even remember the name, <laughs> but I know I enjoyed <laughs> the art style. Was. I mean, that was just the first one, and it was, yeah. like, I didn't enjoy it. <laughs> I enjoyed the art style. That was the only thing about the whole thing that I enjoyed. And then, like, SAO was good. And again, I enjoyed the art style of that mm -hmm. more than, like, the plot, really. And then, like, Full Metal Alchemist was the first one where I was like, all right, the art style's good. And actually, I watched Full Mo the original Full Metal before Brotherhood. Same. And I enjoyed both art styles. But, like, the plot of that, I guess because I was, like, 15, 14... Like, it just, it was just existential enough to get me thinking and also through a medium that I enjoyed. Mm -hmm. 
What about you, Dan? What was your first experience into the world of anime? Oh, it was SAO, and I don't know what you're talking about, SAO being good. The first 12 episodes of Again, SAO are... I enjoyed are, the art style. <laughs> are all right. Okay, the, the first 12 were like, okay. It wasn't and trash then they until have a, the ending. They have an incest arc in the next 12 episodes of a That's 24... True. Core, yeah. Yeah. I'm watching it right now. I don't know why I'm watching it, but I am watching it right now. It's pretty good as something to just point and laugh to. Yeah, no, but I fucking love the meme about it. <laughs> See, and that's like one of those things with like Japan. It is just like a different culture there, and so some things that we think are like not okay are like okay, a so little more okay over there. I just want to point out that like you guys aren't really caught up to this, but like the most recent like season of SAO. The main character is literally in a coma, and he still has a harem. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I think yeah, that the, sounds about right. The worst experience I've had with it is actually in JoJo. In part three of JoJo, there's yeah. an episode <laughs> where the, the, this is an orangutan, and um, I'm not going to say what his stand is because that kind of spoils the episode. But this orangutan, it, there, there's like this 14 or 15 year old chick. Uh, that is just naked, like, 80% of the episode, and she's being sexualized, and the orangutan is trying to rape her, and, uh, it is not okay, in my opinion. <laughs> oh, I, I agree. a lot of other people's opinions. <laughs> I agree but, um, completely. It's Japan, so I guess it's a little more okay. Like, a lot of fans of JoJo just <laughs> okay, try and, like, like, push that out of the collective consciousness. <laughs> also, I will just say, like, we can thank Japan for hentai, so... Like, some of the weird shit that you see in anime, I feel like, is just weird shit that, like, got drug over from hentai and just put, got put into the mainstream anyway. Yeah. And but I don't need under girls. Most Japan's so horny. <laughs> I don't understand. They're because so, they're like... Yeah, because they're repressed. Yeah, they're They're not allowed repressed. to do it in, like, public and stuff. Yeah. So they're not all allowed like, to do it in public. Well, they're not allowed, not allowed to do it in public. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't. they're not allowed to like publicly be like public. <laughs> just like simple like hand holding would be like the worst <laughs> thing ever in Aaron, Japan. Sorry, I'm taken. It's okay. I am. But um, yeah, so next episode uh, we're doing hentai. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Hot new genres <laughs> so every day. We're running a little bit low on um, time, but I guess we've already talked about our like top three favorite anime. But like, if we could just give one recommendation and like a quick like one sentence sentence like elevator pitch um, for an anime you think other people might have like missed out on what well, I don't know what, what would it be yours Aaron or if you we can pass you I kind of threw that question on y'all I mean again I would have to say full metal alchemist brotherhood but like there's so many like again like there's a lot of hot garbage anime out there but like there's also a lot of like really good anime that like gets you thinking and has character development and plot and like existentialism some of them. So, like, if you can pick and choose the good ones, there are a lot to choose from. Mm -hmm. But you have to be careful because there's a lot of hot garbage, too. Yeah. If I could, like, pick one anime to, like, elevator pitch, I'd probably do Cowboy Bebop because it's, like, 24 episodes. It, it, it was, it's, like, the, the um, English um, dub. The English? It's really good because it was, like, done by Cartoon Network or That's whatever. That's one of the few dubs that I can actually stand. Yeah. And so, like, I think it's a really good introduction to anime. Um, so that, that'd be my short little quick elevator pitch. What about you guys? I'll go first. Um, well, I'm not first anyway. But um, this is a random one. It's not even my top three, technically. But um, a good, like, very short anime um, that comes from the top of my head is Promised Neverland. came out pretty recently. And it's a good just story premise it's like the setting of like maze runner but with like this social like what's it called S social like deduction or something yeah social, you know. um, deception deception yeah of like any like house of cards or something where um and it's really good awesome what about you uh Garbage. so it just got uh, adapted on Netflix. It's not in my top three either, but everyone's heard of my top three, so I want to show this. It's uh, called King and Ashura. It's like, it's one of those uh, fighting shows, kind of like Baki, if you've ever seen that. But like, the characters have motivations other than I want to be the strongest. Like, there's plot happening Man, in a show such like a that. Cliche motive. <laughs> I know, right? I want to be the very best, but. Okay, well, I um, I've enjoyed being a weeb with all of you guys, um, and we will see you guys next episode.
Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Auf Wiedersehen.